Hello guys and welcome back. So now we're going to take a look at the uh, shading in Mantra and we're going to look at the principal shader and how to tweak it. Uh, first of all, I'm going to do a quick change here in, in the Mantra node and then we'll explain, uh, we'll get into this in more details later. So I'm going to switch it to physically based render and then I'm going to click here and add a new tab called render view. And here we can use this to do interactive rendering. We can get a, a preview interactively, change the values, and Mantra will keep updating here. So it takes a second for it to initialize, and then we will be able to do faster uh, shader tweaks. We can also click, tell it to uh, render specific areas if we wanted to. So let's go to the mat context. And let's play with the with the shaders that we have. This uh, the principal shader is a very very efficient um, shader that has uh, very little controls, but yet it allows you to create very complex materials quickly. So, for example, if you want to change this to a gold material or a metallic material, you can just use this slider here, and you will know how to balance the diffuse and the reflectivity to give you this look. Um, so let's go over these uh, these controls. We have the diffuse color, obviously, so let's change that. Uh, we can use, if we have any point attributes stored in the mesh, we can use that. It looks like a, yeah, we don't have any, any values there. Uh, so if we have point attributes in SOPs, we can read that here. And then uh, this is for the uh, specular, the index of reflection, the roughness of the specular, the higher the blurrier, the lower the sharper the reflection is. Let's lower this. Cool. Uh, it also has a reflection tint. If you want to inherit the diffuse color, you can do that. So setting this will inherit the diffuse color completely. And then we have a second layer of reflection, uh, it's called coat, and it's basically a second lobe that has reflection and its own uh, roughness. So if you want a multi-layered material, we can have, for example, the primary specular to be to have 0.3 roughness, and then the second coat to have a 0.1 roughness, and then this way we have two, two highlights uh, overlapping. Then we have control for the transparency, if we want to create a glass material or anything like that, this is where we can do that. And then we have a subsurface control uh, with two different modes. The single scattering is when you don't, when you have a uh, subsurface that is not skin, uh, that doesn't look like a skin. For example, if you have a thin layer of, uh, of sand on the river and you want to mimic that, that can be reproduced using the single scatter where it's just a single layer, it doesn't have multiple uh, multiple layers that needs to be interacting with each other. And then this sheen here is basically a fall off that affects the intensity of the diffuse. It's like a frenal on top of the diffuse and it can inherit the diffuse color as well. And then the emission, if you have any emission, you can have the object emit light. Cool. Okay, so let's uh, let's create different different looks and let's go for a muddy color for example uh, a mud like shader so I'm gonna lower the diffuse here and I'm gonna uh, roughen increase the roughness of the specular and let's turn off the secondary coat completely cool so the geometry is quite low res. That's why we don't have a lot of details here. But this is a quick uh, uh, mud or ceramic-like shader. Uh, we have we have subsurface going, so that was improving the look. I wanted to turn that later. But let's turn it all the way in. Let's set it to one, and let's tweak the controls a bit. So I'm going to give it a orange tint. I'm going to set it to a single uh, scatter. Cool. And we can increase the distance you can see here. 
So the bigger, the more the ray are going to travel through the uh, through the object. So let's set this to 0.1, and then the phase is gonna shift the the colors and the absorptions of the of the shader. Okay. Let's. Uh, let's shift drag to expand this region. Okay, cool. So, uh, so this is primarily where we're gonna be, where most of the controls are. If you have um, textures or if you want to add opacity, this is the opacity is different than the uh, transmission. This will make the object transparent. This will make the object uh, refractive. This is. Uh, where you can plug in any textures to drive any of the attributes. So each one of these controls have a texture slot that you can control. Uh, this is for the bump. If you want to um, uh, use a, a bump for the base or the code. So uh, you can have different bumps per uh, BRDF per layer. So you can have specific bump on the base layer and the code, for example, doesn't have bump. So you get that nice layering of uh, two surfaces where you have a rough surface and something else that doesn't have the same roughness on top of it. There's also a rough uh, round edge um, feature that works really well if you have hard corners and things like that. But in this example, everything is very smooth, so it's not going to do much here. And then displacement control if you want to add uh, displacement to the object. And uh, this we don't have to worry about. Cool. So let's uh, let's render this at a higher quality and tweak the mantra settings. And let me go back. I wanted to explain the difference. So mantra itself has various different various uh, rendering algorithm, and we're going to look primarily at the uh, ray tracing, micro polygon, and physically based rendering, and learn when when to use each one of them and what's the difference. So when it comes to particle, for example, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff using the micro polygon rendering and we're going to learn uh, why uh, why that is. And in the case where you have uh, an exterior scene or you have something photorealistic where you need a lot of ref uh, reflection, a lot of uh, ray trace shadows and things like that, the physically based rendering is the way to go. So I'm going to set these, the pixel samples to five by five. And then we can lower the noise threshold a bit. So we can set it to 0 0.05. And this basically is going to check uh, the difference between two pixels. And if the variance between those two, not in the pixels really, but the it, mantra shoots a lot of rays. And then based on the weighted average of those rays, uh, it it, check, it takes that weighted average and checks versus this noise threshold level. If that weighted average is uh, higher than that, it keeps shooting rays until it meets this threshold, but it's not really checking between the pixels. Um, so uh, the lower the value, the more uh, rays it's gonna, Mantra is gonna shoot. And then we can specify uh, the adaptivity are driven by this. So it starts shooting one ray and then keeps increasing until this threshold is met. Uh, if it hit 9, then it's not going to shoot further than that. We can also tell it to shoot a minimum of 2 rays and a maximum of 10 rays with this threshold. These controls are a global multiplier for specific ray type. So if you have uh, noise that is in the diffuse only or the, in the reflection, you don't have to increase everything. Uh, the quality of everything you can just up uh, specific components here. Cool. So I'm going to leave these, uh, I'm going to set this back to 1 and 9. I'm going to hit render and I'd like to see hopefully a noise free or somewhat a uh, very clean image out of uh, the Mantra PBR. Cool. So we still have uh, noise here that we can clean by increase, increasing the samples to maybe 8 by 8 and increasing this to 10. That should get rid of the, <coughs> pardon me, of the noise there. Cool. So this is, this took 30 seconds, which is great. Now let's do a different look for this. I'm going to copy 
go back to the mat. I'm gonna copy this and call this statue mud. And we're gonna create a different uh, shader now. So let's hit render and let's go back to the out context. Set this to 3, 3, and this to 1 so it's faster. Okay, so for the gold look, I'm gonna change this to have a bright orange as the base, maybe not so bright. I'm gonna turn off the subsurface scattering. I'm gonna increase this metallic uh, value here where it's gonna add basically bring in more reflection and by just doing that now we're getting the gold uh, the gold look that we're looking for I'm gonna lower the roughness here nice maybe something like that and let's reduce the reflectivity I want the base layer to not have so, uh, to not be so bright but I want it to be rough so it's blurrier to get these big highlights and then I'm going to add a secondary coat with um, much smaller roughness so it's much sharper and this way we get two different layers on top of each other cool uh, okay let's go to the render settings and talk about the these limits now mantra you can see the surface here is reflecting this guy the, the statue but we also have the statue reflecting the environment the reflection of the lights uh, and the environment is basically a specular and it's the direct the primary reflection the secondary reflection is when the object reflect itself or reflect anything that is not a light for that uh, for those reflection bounces we don't have to be uh, we don't have to go all the way to 10 because it's 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 expensive to do 10 bounces let's set it to zero now with this you can see that the the object and the ground are not reflective anymore and they are not reflecting the uh, environment as well okay let's set this to one and you can see now everything is getting reflected nicely Sorry, the um, yeah. Sorry, the when we set it to zero, it's going to reflect the environment. You can see the reflection here. It's going to reflect anything that is not an object, any light type, and this is basically a direct hit. When we set it to one, it's going to do one bounce. So this object can, will shoot a secondary ray that whatever is going to hit, it's going to reflect. And depend on the depending on the scenario uh, that you're working with, you may not need all the objects to reflect themselves or to reflect the um, basically everything else you may just uh, get away with reflecting the the sky for example when you have an ocean scene sometimes everything is just reflecting the sky and you don't have to have the ocean reflect itself for example so you can set that to zero this is the refraction limit so when we have transparent object actually let's do that now So I'm going to increase the transparency and let's give it a different color. Let's go back to the out context and this is the refraction limit. So uh, they're going to be 10 bounces in, uh, in the refraction. So the ray can bounce 10 times. Uh, while it's traveling the through the object so we can set that to a lower number and that will make it faster zero basically the ray doesn't travel at all and so we don't see any in your uh, any refraction yeah and something higher like two is generally uh, we start seeing good uh, good results the higher the more bounces you're gonna get the diffuse bounce let me turn off the the refraction the diffuse bounce is basically global elimination. Uh, right now we don't have any GI on the scene. We can set this to one, and now we have one bounce of global elimination. Mantra, or the physically based rendering, is a brute force engine. So it uses uh, Quasi Monte Carlo for everything it does, including global elimination. And it can be pretty expensive when you have an interior scene and you need, uh, you need multiple bounces to eliminate everything. Same thing, we can have uh, SSS, uh, multiple uh, multiple scattering, or 
the SSS can bounce multiple times, so we can control that via this this limit here. Uh, this is for volume scattering. We can control that here as well. By default, it's off, but it's also very, very expensive. And then these we don't have uh, to worry about at the moment. Everything else we can keep uh, we can keep to the default settings. We don't have to worry about. And let's increase this to eight by eight. Let's set this to one and ten. I'm gonna lower this to 03, 05. And when we see, for example, uh, some noise that we know it's coming from a specific light, we can go to the light itself and increase its quality. So each light, if we select the environment light, you see here it has sampling quality. If we select the uh, uh, this one, there should be a sampling quality as well. No, it doesn't look like the this the distant light. The directional light doesn't have but point lights and let's see come on sorry the uh, yeah the area lights uh, grid for example has a sampling quality these guys don't so let's set this to distant and let's increase the sampling quality for the environment light only I'm gonna cancel this go to the render settings and let's hit render and see what we get. Cool, so you can see it's pretty clean. There is a little bit of noise here from the secondary. I think it's all coming from the environment light, but overall I'm pretty happy with the, with the result. Yeah, it's pretty clean here as well. I think it's just the reflection. So we can up, for example, in, in Mantra, we can up the reflection quality and that will only improve the reflection. Cool. Well, I think that's pretty much it for the principle and Mantra. Let's continue. Thank you guys for watching and see you in a bit.